and welcome to Two Tired Teachers. Today I'm going to be talking about putting Eternal Bond on the roof of our RV. And the first thing I want to say is overestimate what you're going to need. I had a 50 foot roll of 4 inch and of 2 inch and actually used all of the 4 inch and most of the 2 inch. But it all starts with prep work. Be sure that you give the roof a good clean. And I just used some mild detergent there, dishwashing detergent, a medium bristle brush. And the places where I knew I was going to be putting this tape, I really scrubbed pretty well. I wanted to get it as clean as possible. And the rest of the roof, I did go on and clean. And the roller and the screen roller were really uh, tools that I would not do this job without. I used them a lot. Exacto knife as well. The alcohol wipes, this was just kind of a post COVID thing. They had these on sale for uh, 50 cents or something. And I got several stacks of them and I used them uh, to prep every area I was going to put this on. And I want to apologize about the camera work. I was actually wearing the GoPro on my head, which I usually don't. And so I wasn't sure how well it was going to come out, but uh, the caps on the end here, these black caps, I went on and wanted to put the four inch on those. I cut just a little bit so I could actually fold it over. Um, I've loved having the back end of the RV completely dark, but if I did that, there really wasn't going to be much of a place to catch that there on the end, on the back of it. So um, started off putting a four inch piece on these uh, little caps on the end. And it worked really well. And the reason I was doing this is our Dicor lap sealant. Um, when I got up there last year, I did some patches on it. And it looked fine. Uh, this year, uh, I mean, I do, I do this twice a year. But this year when I got up there, it was really cracked. And I knew I needed to do something. And I liked the idea of this being more permanent. And so I, uh, this is above the gutter. There's a little uh, plastic piece that covers some screws there. And so I'm really going, uh, connecting this in there. And then that's the part right there. That's the seam where the um, RV roof comes under. And uh, folks, there's just, I took my time with this. I watched some videos of people saying they did this in about three hours. That was not me. And I know what I'm going to say is not popular, but let's face it. Women do not have the upper body strength or the hand grip that men do. But I took my time. And um, so you may be able to do this faster. But this little tool, getting it in those grooves worked out perfectly. And I would uh, clean with the alcohol wipes come back and really apply pressure. Pressure is what causes this tape to adhere. And right here, this, this seal is really getting cracked. And up here, you can see where this one is cracked. And so I feel so good about how watertight this is. And honestly, I think that from the side, it does not look bad at all. On the other side, once again, very dry and cracked. So getting this um, Eternabond tape on there, starting off with a four inch strip, there's the section that's been done. Here's the section that hasn't. I really, I know some people don't like the looks of it or say they don't. I think it looks really good. But what I'm more concerned about is how watertight this is. And I watched a lot of videos before I decided to do this. And that was something I just really couldn't see from the videos is how watertight this really seems to be. Okay, this is the back end before I put the four inch strip on there. And like I said, I wrapped it over the end, uh, tried to keep it about halfway on the that, that cap on the end. But um, that's the back end that's done. Here's the side and there's the uh, other side and I'm getting ready to... Well, here you can see the back end. That little white strip at the top, like I said, I don't think that looks bad at all. I was really, I, I was really concerned about doing that, but it turned out well. Okay, I one of the videos I watched, the guy said he wished he'd done a six-inch strip on his front cap. 
And so I thought I've got two inch and I've got four inch. I will just make kind of an overlap here. And so this first two inch strip, I tried to keep it about halfway on this first metal piece here. And once again, this has all been cleaned really well. I scrubbed it. Then I went back over all of this with alcohol wipes. And um, just taking your time is really key. Um, and any black that comes out like that up at the top, that's just the adhesive that's actually sticking well. And so taking my time trying to get this to form as well as possible. And um, I put the two inch strip all the way across, uh, came back and used the rollers to make sure that it was uh, act that that glue was as activated as possible. OK, here is the two inch strip that has been laid down. And now the four inch, I actually used that uh, edge of the two inch, probably about a quarter of an inch overlap. Um, and use that as my guide to get a straight seam on here. And that worked for me. I know some people marked their roofs, etc. I will say, is the, if the afternoon got warmer uh, and this got hotter, that sometimes the backing would stick. And so you'd really have to kind of tug on that. Um, but this is, it's the same process for everything. But here is the, the front cap done. You see, it's not perfect. But once again, look at how much more watertight this is than it was before this process. That's what I loved about it. Okay, next morning, doing all of the pieces that are on top. And uh, once again, it's clean with alcohol swab. Come back around. Uh, using the roller to uh, get this down. And you can see, I think the one that's been done looks a whole lot better than the one that hasn't. And so just kind of a, the second, actually this is over the shower, uh, put the piece down, roll it as good as I can with this big roller. And then something I really hadn't planned on with this smaller roller uh, using it, laying it flat, and then using it up inside of these edges that I couldn't. Now, most of the places I did use this little roller to outline where that die core is because I want this sealant in there as good as possible. And same story on the refrigerator vent. And by the way, you can see that's kind of rusted, and I looked for some screen that I had, didn't find it, but I'm going to get that in there. Uh, but put that put the piece down, roll it, and then come back through with the smaller roller and fine tune anything that I couldn't get done before. And that is the back end done, uh, except for the ladder. I did that last. But anyway, this vent in front has the vent cover over it. And I got to tell you, I put four inch strip across the back and then just kind of piece the rest of that together. Uh, but as long as it was overlapping, that was fine. Here's more of a close-up of the side. And like I said, I think it looks good. And here is my finished product. Um, and like I said, the thing that stands out to me is how watertight this is. Okay, some people said it took them about three hours. I worked three hours yesterday morning, about three hours yesterday afternoon, and another three or four hours this morning. But I feel really good about the finished product. Um, it is so much more watertight than it was. And um, the purpose of this video is to show you if I can do it, you can do it. Thanks for watching Two Tired Teachers.